Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Ethan Drew. Yet another reaction and analysis today. Today we're going to be reacting to and breaking down Diana Ankudinova. I, I probably butchered that, but we're going to be reacting to her performance of Wicked Game on the TV show. People have been requesting this like crazy, and it's been too long since I've gotten to it, but we're finally here. So with that said, we're going to jump right into the breakdown. I'm sorry, we're going to be breaking down... Uh, we are going to be jumping into the first time reaction portion of the video where I listen to it without stopping and there will be a break and then there will be a breakdown and analysis portion analysis a breakdown and analysis portion where I break down the music and the voice that you're hearing what's going on with it how the singer is singing and other arrangement <laughs> how the singer is singing, what's going on in the music, and how talented the singer has to be in order to achieve what they're achieving. With that said, let's dive right into Diana Kudinova, I guess, her performance of Wicked Game. All right, folks, so we have arrived at the breakdown and analysis portion. I'm sorry. We have arrived... <laughs> We have arrived at the first time reaction portion of the video. Like I said, there will be no pausing. This will be a first time genuine reaction to this performance. With that said, let's give this a listen. I'm excited. She impressed me last time I listened to her, so let's get to it. <laughs> Very intimate singing here. Class. This timber is just crazy. Timber, timber. Literally sounds like a male singing right here. Come on. Some extremely well controlled riffing here. Wow. Okay, so that was incredible. Um, <laughs> there's not much to say. 
you if you if you're listening to Diana D- Diana then you listen to her for a freakishly deep timbre or timber if you will she is a genetic outlier for sure when it comes to that timber there's not going to be another female on the face of the planet that sounds like her whatsoever and that's what makes her special and that's part of the reason why she's so dang popular in addition to her incredible singing ability of course too but (laughs) <laughs> this is this is cool. So I'm going to try my best to break down what you're hearing in her voice. And yeah, I'm excited. So I will see you over there in the breakdown portion in just a moment. All right, folks. So we have arrived at the breakdown and analysis portion where I break down what's going on in the music and or in the voice. In this particular case, it'll be more so what's going on in Diana Diana's voice. So... With that said, we're going to jump promptly back into this, but I'm going to kind of explain what's going on with her voice and in the music. So with that said, let's jump in. Very intimate singing to start off, very hushed, very, it was basically a whisper at the beginning. Musical contrast, good job. Um, So, for those who are not familiar with Diana or Diana, she has a freakishly low sitting timbre for a female. And what I mean by timbre or timbre is the color of the voice. It's very... It's very. I'm looking for the appropriate word. It's very dark, very cavernous, and way beyond what you would expect out of a female voice. Like, even contraltos pale in comparison to Diana here. She is very easily a dramatic contralto. The lowest lying female voice out there and she's an she's an incredible singer of course but to have a dramatic contralto and an incredible singer mashed together i'm telling you diana diana is a genetic outlier so her timbre is switching a lot here So she kind of starts off with a lighter timbre whenever she starts singing here. It's strange what is so right there she sounds more like a your typical alto, but she then starts to dip into dramatic contralto territory again. Listen, alto. Dramatic contralto. Dramatic contralto. Do you hear the switch there? It's like a light switch almost. Listen to the difference. Somebody. That's literally a C3. And... Most females can't get down there, and if they can, it is very rocky, and it also sounds very breathy, very light. That's just, it's crazy to think that a female can just have that much power in the third octave, that low, almost second octave. Ridiculous. So she's really going back and forth between the alto and the dramatic contralto portion of her timbre. And that's for musical contrast, vocal contrast, not keeping it totally the same. Class. Uh, 
So she's up to a B flat four there. And it's not like she's struggling for the B flat four, but it's, you can tell that that's starting to get close to the top of her chest range. And it just further proves the point that she is a dramatic contralto. Have you ever heard a female that has that dark of a timber or timbre? I'll wait. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, folks. Listen to this timber shift. That's literally an F3. Uh, and by the way, the C that I was mentioning earlier was a C4, not a C3. To make me feel this way. Also, I do have to make mention of Diana or Diana's English. It is pretty darn solid. It's it's very good. But we get to do to let me dream of you. I mean, it, listening to her voice, if you were to close your eyes, you would think that this is some form of low tenor or high baritone kind of range, if, and you would think it would be a male singer. Just listen to this. There's a little bit of a mix in her voice on that particular me on the B flat four. That was a really nice riff there. Listen. That was in uh, falsetto or head voice. For those that don't know, falsetto voice compared to chest voice, the placement of the voice itself will be more close to your actual facial region, nasal region, and it will sound airy. It, will, it won't necessarily sound weak per se, but it will definitely have some more air to it. And it will also... There's another word I'm looking for. It will sound airy. The placement will be up in the no nasal cavity area, in the head area, and it's it makes or let me falsetto sounds very intimate. It's almost like you're whisper singing in a way. That's a good way to think of falsetto is whisper singing. <laughs> And I have no doubt whatsoever that she's capable of singing in full chest voice up into the fourth octave and into the fifth octave, but she start really starts to struggle in the fifth octave because she's a dramatic contralto. Totally normal. If you're if you have a naturally a low sitting voice like her, then it's gonna be normal to not get as high as your typical soprano or or your typical um, higher sitting alto. See, it almost sounds like a falsetto voice sounds a lot like half whispering, half singing, if you will. She's really good at riffing, especially live. There it is again. More riffing, building intensity. And there is some belt, like chest belting from Diana here. And it goes back to what I was saying about dramatic contraltos just sitting lower than all the other female voices. This range, she's belting in the fourth octave. And most females won't be belting in the fourth octave. They will be really stretching 
to get, or they would normally be building in the top of the fourth, in the fifth, etc. I mean, right around there. She is full on, pretty much full on belting at this point, but she's just full on belting in a dramatic contralto's range. Listen to the quality of her voice here. So those weren't the exact right pitches in the context of the key that she's singing in, but listen to how much more power there is behind her voice compared to what she was just singing not even 10 to 15 seconds ago. Ooh, nice, nice voice crack there, Diana. Nice. So there, there's a lot less air behind that, that singing she's doing here, and vocal contrast, musical contrast. But that's a way to determine that it's full on chest voice, and that's also a way to determine if someone's belting is that if you're going to be belting, there's going to be basically no air, like no airy like sounds coming out. It's going to just sound meaty, like a voice. Ha! It's, it doesn't have, ha, it doesn't sound airy, ha, it's going to be very, very powerful if you are belting, because it's going to be high in volume, it's going to be thick, and it's going to be resonant, and she's just killing it, she is just killing it here. Most guys can belt in that range comfortably. Like, I can. Most baritones, most tenors, even some basses can belt in that range. But not all female voices can. Like, she is literally sitting in a male's territory when it comes to comfortable belting. Crazy. That's an A flat four, G sharp four. Back and forth between a G sharp, A flat four, and a B flat, A sharp four. She's got amazing control up there, even near the top of her range. Ooh, there's a switch to falsetto there. Hello, that was cool. Very subtle, very, very subtle, that switch. Listen to that super well-controlled riffing here. That timber is timber is really cutting through here. Like I even for me, I don't even have that dark of a timbre, and I'm a bass baritone in a in a male voice. Uh, uh, like I have to over darken in order to match her timbre. But you. Crazy, crazy, crazy performance from a crazy, crazy, crazy voice, folks. You are not going to find another voice on the face of the planet like Diana's. I guarantee you. And if you if you do find another voice like hers, send it to me, please, and thank you. That does it for today's reaction and analysis. This one's a little bit shorter than usual, but... Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. There will be more content coming in the future from Diana or Diana. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the content and you're new to the channel, I would appreciate it if you would drop me a comment. It helps the algorithm. Drop me a like. And even if you're drop, if, even if you're commenting, even if you just drop a smiley face, that helps the video out a lot and push it to the algorithms. So that way more people can see it. 
If you're enjoying the content enough, I would appreciate a subscription. I'm trying to make it to 3,000 subscribers, so we're w hot on 3,000 subscribers' tail. So I would appreciate if you would throw me one of those uh, subscriptions. And if you are enjoying the content on the channel and you would like to take your contribution to the channel to a new level, I would encourage you to visit my Patreon, where you can support me as little as $3 a month if you choose to. That is not a, that is not a requirement by any means to enjoy my content, but you will get some really cool, really, really cool perks, such as being able to interact with me. You will also get to see videos early, and you will also get snippets of music that I'm working on behind the scenes while I'm working on it. So stay tuned. I've got some more snippets coming soon to my patrons. And in the meantime, I will see you in the next one. This has been Drew, Ethan Drew, excuse me, on the Vocast, and I'm signing off. I love you. Take care of yourselves. Bye.